All right, episode 10, the final episode of the sub 250 marathon build. It has been quite a ride. I honestly can't believe we stuck with it the entire time, posting almost weekly. If you haven't seen any of them, we have a whole category. What? How long have I been on YouTube? I don't even know what they're called. We have a whole playlist on the sub 250 build if you wanna start from the beginning, all 10 episodes. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the taper, give some insights about what I felt about the training block, and then just how I'm feeling going into the race, hopefully getting you hyped up for the race, watching it maybe, or getting hyped about your own race. And what is the taper? I'm not gonna get incredibly technical here because to be honest, I don't really know too much about the very specific nature of a taper. What I do know is that in any marathon training block, you are training with high mileage, high volume throughout, relative to what you normally do in any other kind of training. If you're doing any kind of short to middle distance training, you're never running as many miles as you do in a marathon training block. So for me, this was the first time I'd ever gotten into the 70 and even 80 mile week type of volume. It proved to be incredibly difficult for me. When I had the time, I was able to get it in every single day and get into the 70s and 80s towards the beginning and middle of this 12 week training block. Eight, no. 12 week, yep. <laughs> What I started to realize is that the first few days of the week was really easy to get out Monday, Tuesday, start the week off really well. And then once my week started to get busier and busier, started to get all jumbled up, switching days, missing days, getting sick because of the volume and the effort of training alongside balancing my full-time career and being a husband and a father. And I'm really happy that I color-coded my training plan the way I did, with green being the days I hit the workout exactly the way I intended, yellow being switching days or switching up the workouts with something different, and red being completely missing that workout. You'll notice towards the end of the training block, there are a significant amount more red days than yellow or green because training just started to become too much for me. I started to realize in maybe week eight or nine that I didn't necessarily need this volume. I set out to do it. I am kind of mad at myself that I didn't stick with it the entire time. I realized towards the end in some of those workouts, in some of those efforts, and even in the 10K time trial that I'm in the fitness and shape I need to be in. Really feeling like I needed to hit every single mile in each week started to feel irrelevant towards the end. No knowing that I was in sub 250 shape, especially because in this process of doing this many miles a week, it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. As I've talked about in videos in, in this series previous weeks, I'm going to lower my mileage moving forward in my training blocks and focus more on the intensity of workouts, maybe doing two to three workouts a week instead of just one to two workouts a week. And all of this leads me to the point of the taper, what I wanna talk about today. And the taper is one of the most important parts of any marathon training block getting to your goal race. because. Without the taper, you're not going to show up to the race fresh. From my experience talking to semi-professionals and just people who marathon regularly, the taper should be a two to three week process where you come off of your peak mileage and start significantly decreasing that mileage from 10 to 15% every week down to your race week where you're doing about half of the mileage that you were doing at your peak or even less than half before the race. So in my case, my peak weeks were in the 80s and I slowly started to trickle down in the, the last four weeks, 80, 70, 60, my last two weeks getting into 50 and then 40. I'm only doing, I think 25 to 30 miles this week before my 26.2 coming this Saturday. The reason for this taper is that you want your body to be fresh. Rest is one of the most important things you can do in marathon training, as I talked about in I think episode three, where easy running and recovery is one of the most important things you can do in the process of training. Most people are Early on in marathon training think that there needs to be a lot of effort, a lot of mileage, and they don't focus on the recovery aspects. My realization in this training block, I found out that lactate leaves your body no longer than an hour after your workouts. I was under the impression that it was staying in your blood and in your muscles for two, maybe three days after hard workouts. The realization is actually that after hard workouts, your muscles need recovery because they're literally torn, microscopic tears in your muscles, and you need to have the proper rest and recovery to let them rebuild. And that process is good. That process is something that needs to happen so that your muscles get stronger, that your fitness improves, but recovery is so important in that process. So what the taper really does is it really utilizes that recovery. It lowers that volume, that intensity that your body is now used to, and it makes you kind of feel superhuman. It kind of makes you feel like you can go out and run more miles than you ever do on any given workout at harder paces than you have been doing all training because you feel so fresh, your muscles feel 
feel so recovered and your body is in peak fitness. I think it's really just as simple as that. I got a little too excited this past Sunday and ran. Well, I was supposed to run it on Saturday. We had a road trip. I pushed it to Sunday, six days before the race, and I ran 13, 13.1 miles at a 639 pace, which is 10 seconds slower than my race pace. But I just wanted a steady effort that didn't feel too difficult. Truth be told, it didn't really feel that difficult. I don't regret it, but I don't necessarily recommend it. You don't wanna be putting in super hard efforts or even above average efforts in that last week, that last week and a half before your peak marathon race. One of those classic do as I say, not as I do moments. I don't think it's gonna hurt me because knowing that I had six days to rest and recover up until race, I should be fine. So this entire week is just filled with recovery runs and aerobic runs where I'm not pushing my heart rate, I'm not extending my mileage. Just yesterday, I did two miles within eight that were at race pace just to get the legs feeling like what it's going to feel like on race day and to test out the kit that I'll be wearing on race day. And everything from today into Thursday and Friday is just going to be four or five or six miles with the last shakeout run being four miles and some strides and then racing. In this taper, I'm also really focusing on hydration. I'm drinking liquid IV and Element, Element T with water consistently so that I'm peeing constantly, pee is clear. I'm starting to carbo load now three to four days out all the way into race to really get uh, the sugars up in my nutrition. Those are turning into glycogen. The carbohydrates turning into glycogen for race day. So those glycogen stores are totally packed to the brim by race day, ready to be burned. And as I've you know researched and found out in the past year while reading advanced marathoning, that glycogen, those calories in your body are really somewhere around 2,000, 2,000 calories. So on race day, you burn around 100 calories per mile, which means you only have about 20 miles of energy. And we talked about this previously supplementing with gels, getting those calories back in your system. But before the race, I wanna make sure that that tank of 2000 calories and that glycogen is completely topped off starting all the way three to four days out from the race. I'm sitting in this scene to prove that I have experience. <laughs> That's so arrogant. <laughs> I say all this because it might look like I'm fairly decorated at this point. This is eight marathons and a half marathon. But if you really look at all this, it's not as impressive as it seems. Out of all of these marathons, I only didn't stop twice. I only ran consistently throughout two times. One time in Chicago where I fell apart at mile 16 and kept running. And then the only race that I've ever negative split and run exactly to plan this past October in Chicago 2022. Now that I have the knowledge and experience of running that way, I plan to do the same thing this weekend in Carmel, but it's taken me a solid five to six years to understand that process and how all of these moving parts work. And that's what I want to finish this video on is marathon training, marathon running is a process and you get what you put in. You can put in the time, the energy, the studying to be able to perform to your fullest. I made a video in this training block called You Can't Cheat the Marathon. It's true. You can't bank time in the first half. It essentially never works for anybody. You can't cheat the race by just showing up and believing that your adrenaline is going to take you across the finish line in the time that you want. You have to put in the hours, you have to put in the work, you have to have the knowledge and the plan to be successful. And it's safe to say that I'm the most prepared I've ever been going into a marathon for this one. I feel extremely confident going in with the race plan that I have, I feel extremely confident knowing what I do know, and I feel extremely confident in the fitness I have because of the work that I've put in. And this training block is a testament of that. I really hope that you don't see a video like this on this channel or any of the videos that I make as just an arrogant narcissist talking about his running, but rather that it helps you understand that part of the journey for you is essential if you wanna meet the goals that feel uncomfortable for you. That you do need to put in the work, that you do need to show up day in, day out, week in, week out, year after year, if you wanna be attacking the goals that make you feel uncomfortable. And I hope this is motivation and fuel for you. I'm so excited for this weekend. I am ready to absolutely throw down at Carmel. And if I have gas left in the tank, I'm gonna put my foot down to the floor. Hopefully, honestly, come away with a 246 or 247. That's really my A goal, to be honest. I'd be happy with anything under 250, but I really wanna show up for this race and I really think I can do it. Don't forget, really quickly, Friday, April 7th at 3 p.m. Eastern, right out at the Front Circle Drive at Carmel High School. We'll do a four mile shakeout run. Hope to see you there if you're gonna be there. Till the next time, Flover Runs. I'll see you on that race vlog. Bye.